Shana Tova and welcome to Kol Nidre. There's a story that I was thinking about, a story I heard many years ago, a story that brings us into this, well, this evening, this day, this, well, 24 hours of reflection. And the story goes that there's a man, a man who lost his axe. And he looked at a young man who lived down the street and he thought, this young man has stolen my axe. And he knew this because from the way he carried himself, from the way his eyes looked, from the way he spoke, he knew this young man was guilty. And a few weeks passed. And after this passage of time, he found his axe. And he looked at this young man and said, oh, he doesn't look guilty. His words are just fine. We need to stop blaming others for our losses. We need to stop blaming others for our problems. We need to stop blaming others for our sins. We need to dig into our own cellars. We need to, well, use that ax to dig. And to dig deep to figure out who we are so we can reflect on our own souls and not point at someone else and say, they are the problem. And once we can dig into our own souls, we can see the positive in ourselves and in others. And then we can find holiness. In Leviticus, it reads, The tenth day of the seventh month is a day of atonement, a sacred occasion for you. You shall practice self-denial, and you shall bring an offering by fire to Adonai. You shall do no work throughout the day. For it is a day of atonement to cleanse you from all of your sins so that you shall be clean before God. Do no work. It is a Sabbath of complete rest for you. On the ninth day of the month at evening, from evening to evening, you shall observe your Shabbat. So today we observe the Shabbat of Shabbats, the Sabbath of Sabbaths. We observe Yom Kippur a gateway to change. I now like to ask our president and his wife, Rob and Terry Millen, to please light our holiday candles. Now we turn to page nine for the Shechianu, a prayer we say to remind us of the blessings that occur at this time, well, during this season, each and every year. The Shechianu. Tonight, no one is sitting alone. 
You might think that there is no one in your house, but there's a holy presence there. Because we're taught that on Yom Kippur, God sits next to each and every congregant in the pews of a synagogue. And tonight, those pews, they are your homes. So realize that you're surrounded by holiness tonight because God is next to you. And why is God sitting next to you tonight? God is there to hear kol nidre. Because God, like every human being, has not fulfilled commitments and vows this year. God has broken promises. God has not done what God should do to make this a perfect world, just like us. So God sits next to each one of us and says, I can do better. Just as we say, I can do better. And together, we can join with all that is holy and we can make a more perfect world. And it all starts with saying, well, the Kol Nidre prayer. Now, Kol Nidre is a dry, legalistic formula, but its, well, its power comes from its music. It comes from the cantor and the choir. It comes from the way it is shared from the heart. Each year we have congregants stand on our bima, holding Torahs, acting as our rabbinic court. Each year, each year they stand there, representing all that is holy, representing the forgiveness we are given for breaking our vows. This year, we will have congregants holding Torahs. You'll see a montage of congregants holding Torahs in front of their homes and in their backyards, acting as our court, absolving us of all, well, the commitments we have not fulfilled. We now turn to page 18 for Kol Nidre. Shavikin 
Tonight's second repetition of Kol Nidre will be said by the community. I'd like everyone to join me on the bottom of page 18 and read along with me. Together. All vows, resolves, and commitments, vows of abstinence and terms of obligation, sworn promises and oaths of dedication, that we promise and swear to God and take upon ourselves from this day of atonement until next day of atonement, may it find us well. We regret them and for all of them we repent. Let all of them be discarded and forgiven, abolished and undone. They are not valid and they are not binding. Our vows shall not be vows. Our resolves shall not be resolves. And our oaths, they shall not be oaths. And we now continue with the final chanting of Kol Nidre. Cantor. Oh, <laughs> 
on the bottom of page 21. I bow, I face the ground, I fall before the Most High. Farther than heaven's heaven are you, nearer to me than the flesh on my bones. What have I to offer you but my spirit? How shall I lift my eyes to you? How can my tongue give praise? The signs of your love are countless, as are my sins, more numerous than the sands of the sea. So guide me toward the right path, my teacher, my keeper of faith, source of all that I know. When my heart speaks, I hear the words myself, and you, may you hear me too. We continue with the call to prayer on page 22. Please be seated. We continue with the reading of Ma'ariv Aravim on page 24 in English. Please join me. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your great name fills the universe with majestic might. Your word creates twilight and dusk as your wisdom opens the gates of night. Your discernment separates the changing seasons and causes the passage of time. The stars arrayed across the sky reveal your design. You roll out the cycle of darkness and light, shaping day and night. You sweep away day and carry the world into nightfall, setting day apart from nighttime. You are God of all we can perceive and all that is beyond our perception. Living eternal God, be our sovereign to the end of time. Baruch Ata Aranai Hamariv Aravim. Blessed are you, Aranai, creator of twilight and dusk. In the Torah scroll, the letters Ain and Dalid are always enlarged in the reading of the Shema. Ain and Dalid form the word witness. In the Shema, we bear witness to the oneness of God. Well, on this day, we remember that God is our witness. As the liturgy states, you God alone are the one whom we can rely on as the one true judge and plaintiff, counselor and witness 
to our lives. You inscribe and seal. You record and recount. You remember all that we have forgotten. Please rise for the Shema. Shema Please be seated. We continue on page 30 with the Via Hafta. Via Hafta, et Adonai Elohecha, bechol levavcha, ubechol nafshecha, ubechol meodecha, vehayu advarim haele, asher anochi. Metzavecha Hayom Alevavecha Veshinan Tam Levanecha Vedibarta Baham Beshivtecha Havavetecha Uvlechtecha Havaderech Uvshochbecha Uvekumecha Uksar Tam Leot Aliadecha Vehayu Tafot bein einecha Uchtav tam Al mezuzot beitecha Uvisharecha Leman tizkeru Vasitem et kol mitzvotai Vitem kedoshim Leilohechem Ani Adonai Elohechem Asher hotzeiti etchem Meretz Mitzrayim Lihiot lachem Lelohim Ani Adonai Elohechem I'm on page 41. For every exile who walked out of Egypt between walls of water, for everyone who remembered the feel of sea bottom underfoot, the sibilant roar of water rearing on the right, on the left, someone forgot, someone scanning the dry horizon for a well, or already mourning the musky smell of autumn in her father's fig trees, forgot the hosannas, and by the bitter waves of Mara, Forgot the flash of dancing feet, the shimmer of timbrels. For every proselyte at Sinai, someone never heard of horns at all. Someone turned back from the mountain to bank the fire, feed the baby, steal a secret moment with another. Revelation begins in attention. While the elders trembled before the word of God, flowing down the scorched north flank of Sinai, someone rising from a last long embrace, gazed into the rapt face of the beloved and saw that it was good. Baruch Ataranai Ka'al Yisrael. Blessed are you in our lives, eternal one who redeemed Israel. We join the Micha Mocha on page 40. Um <laughs> Kiblu alem, Moshe uvene Israel, lechon ushira besimcha.
לפני משה ומרים. זה לי ענו ואמרו מיד חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, גל ישראל. We turn to page 46 for the Amidah. The Amidah is also called Hatefila, the prayer. And that's what it says at the top of your page. Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch taught us that Hit Palel, from which Tefillah is derived, originally meant to deliver an opinion about oneself, to judge oneself. So when we're praying, we're reflecting upon who we are, not upon who someone else is, but upon ourselves. So as we rise in just a moment for this prayer, let us think about how prayer can improve us and how we can improve our prayer. Please rise as we turn to the ark for Ha Tefillah, also called the Amidah. Ha'el ha'gadol <laughs> 
Remember us for life, sovereign God who treasures life. Inscribe us in the book of life, for your sake, God of life. We turn to page 78 for Shalom Rav. This will conclude our Amidah after Shalom Rav. You may be seated. Shalom Rav al Israel amecha
You may be seated. In 2012, I just finished my first year as Kol Tikva's rabbi. Boy, I was an eager professional in those days, having just been ordained four years prior. During that high holy day season, I delivered a sermon titled, Everything Breaks, because at that moment I felt that everything was broken. From our nation's politics, to health care, to the situation in the Middle East, I saw breakage all around me, all around us, and I was worried. Back then, we remembered and still felt the effects of the 2008 downturn. We were in the midst of a heated election. We had concern over our broken health care system, and we felt heartbroken over the Mideast because, well, it was in a typical Mideast moment of crisis. Now I look back and see that 2012 was a pretty good year. Actually, a great year. Yep, I'd go back to 2012 right now if offered the chance. Back to a moment when my kids were 11 and 13. Back to a moment when political discourse actually occurred across the aisles. Back to a moment when we could gather together in a real environment. Back to a moment when, in retrospect, I felt invincible. Yep, 2012 looks pretty unbroken when looking back through the lens of time. Or maybe I'm just being nostalgic. Yep, probably just nostalgic. Perhaps every moment that we live through is broken and we just don't realize it until after it passes. Or perhaps each moment is perfect because it is unique, no matter whether it makes us happy or sad or something in between. Yes, I'm still trying to figure that conundrum out. As I prepared for these high holy days, I kept thinking about how everything breaks. So I decided I needed to talk about broken things. Let me emphasize, I needed and continue to need to reflect upon this topic because I have felt broken so many times over the last few months and so many times over the course of my life. Rabbis return to that which gnaws at their souls. Our sermons are reflections of who we are and who we wish to be. If you want to learn about a rabbi, read through 10 years of his or her sermons and you'll see repeated messages stated over and over again. So brokenness, I need to return to it again. And let's admit it, brokenness become an emotion just like love and hate and anger and joy and the feeling you get when you eat a perfectly cooked meal. Who would have thought it? Yes, brokenness is the newest of emotions. I'd like a side of brokenness with that plate of sadness. So let's start with some Bible. That's what rabbis do. And I think that we need to start by giving some respect to our tradition and to reflect on, well, that which is broken. So what's broken in the Torah? God gave Moses a set of tablets, magnificent to behold. Moses proudly carried these tablets down a mountain toward the Israelites. But his pride soon turned into rage when he saw the Israelites dancing in front of a golden calf. That was a big no-no. In his anger, he smashes the tablets, destroying them. After the Israelites repented, he returns up the mountain where God tells Moses the words to write upon a second set of tablets. He didn't break that set. He did not repeat his mistake. But unlike Moses, how many of us have made the same mistake time and time again? Okay, now let's remember the ark our ancestors carried around in the desert. The ark lived in the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest could approach it, and only on Yom Kippur. What was in that ark? The Ten Commandments. And the Talmud, our rabbis, taught that Moses did not just place the second set of tablets in the ark. At God's request, Moses also placed the broken pieces of the first set. Broken and whole living together. You see, even when something is broken, even when it cannot be repaired, even when it needs to be replaced, it can retain its kedusha, its holiness. But I've always wondered, who picked up the broken pieces? Nowhere does it say, and then Moses bent down and lovingly picked up the broken pieces. So was it Moses, Aaron, Miriam? or a young Israelite child who collected what once was whole. Which of them had the insight to know that these pieces were special, that they were worth saving? Would you have known? Or would you have left the bits of broken tablet on the desert floor, allowing them to decay, to be lost forever? Sometimes the broken pieces need more love and care than those that are whole. 
and sometimes they were even more special. It is so easy to turn away from that which is broken. It is easy to hide in our residences and nurse our gardens and figure out how to turn our homes into castles. It is easy to pretend that we can find a way to be whole when the rest of the world is suffering. But we are only pretending. We are all connected. That's what the Shema emphasizes when it speaks of oneness. God is one and we are the reflection of God. So we are one. When a part of us is broken, then all of us is broken. A few minutes ago, I admitted that I felt pretty broken at times, especially over the last few months. Now fess up, you have to. Let's be honest, at this moment, we are all feeling pretty broken. Maybe this service has lifted your spirits, but over the last few months, I'm gonna guess each and every one of you have had some down moments. There are so many stresses, finances, education, home life, work life, social inequality, and of course, where to find Lysol products at a reasonable price. We feel beat up by everything and everything seems to be overwhelming. We've become like a soldier I met over 15 years ago. His story is one I did not remember until coming across a piece I wrote about him so many, many years ago. It broke my heart that I'd forgotten this moment because of its power. Let me share it with you. At the time, I was a student rabbi in Butte, Montana, and it was the weekend before Thanksgiving. This was some 12 to 15 years ago. I was traveling to Butte with a long layover in Salt Lake City. I sat at an airport bar between flights, drinking a gin and tonic and eating a pizza. The place was packed with rowdy travelers and soldiers going home for the holiday. Every seat was filled except for one at my table. So a soldier sat down next to me, an old soldier maybe 40, hair thinning, someone who's been in the army a day too long. You on leave, I asked, he nodded yes. Stationed in Iraq, he nodded again. And then without asking another question, he began to talk. He talked about a demotion due to an incident with a young captain, about worries and his concerns about going home to his wife, his concerns about returning to Iraq for his final three months of duty. He talked and talked and talked and then, and then he said, I don't want to kill any more elk or deer or people. I can't do it anymore. I just want to go home. He cried as I listened. I offered him some pizza and with nimble fingers he signed, thank you. A skill he learned from his deaf brother who died five years earlier. We ate, we talked, he cried. His body was whole, but he was broken nonetheless. I pray that this man whose name I never knew found a path back to not wholeness because that seemed impossible but to repair to a new normal. People break. Someone broke it in your home, in your life. Are you broken? Can you give them the help they need to feel whole again, to find a new normal? Can you ask for the help that you need? Just because someone breaks doesn't mean that they should be discarded. If that were true, most of us would have been discarded long ago. Pain doesn't always disappear, but it can dissipate. We can move towards a new normal as long as we ask for help and offer help. Everyone breaks. You, me, when you break, who will hold your hand, my hand, until we are better. And even when you feel alone in your brokenness, there are so many who want to remind you that you are unique and special. So let them. Our mystical tradition knew that the world was broken. It was a given. That's why the mystics of the 16th century came up with the idea of tikkun olam, of healing the world. There would be no need for tikkun olam if they believed God's world was perfect. Tikkun olam meant healing the world through prayer, study, and reflection. Today it means caring for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our world, stranger and friend alike. But boy, is that hard to do right now. It is so easy to not care, to focus on one's own concerns. But as Jews, we are commanded to love the stranger. We are taught this idea 36 times in the Torah, 36 times. It's got to be important if it's repeated that often. So how are you going to fix the brokenness of people you know and those you do not know? Love the stranger. A congregant died after a long bout with cancer. 
It was my honor to be her rabbi during the final months of her life. This is a woman who surrounded herself with friends and family. About 10 days before she died, I stopped by her home to visit. Her house is packed with people of all ages, some in the swimming pool, some watching television, some cooking in the kitchen, some socializing with each other. She sat in the midst of it all, drifting in and out of sleep, surrounded by all the children, grandchildren, her husband and friends. A community surrounded her, a community of her own creation, both biological and through relationship. It was said her life did not revolve around her chemo treatments. Her treatments revolved around her life. Over the final years of her life after being diagnosed with cancer, she kept a social calendar that would exhaust the healthiest of us. We must accept what is broken, but also realize that it does not define who we are as human beings. Everyone breaks, everything breaks, even our bodies. When our bodies break, do we allow the breakage to define and control us? Or do we accept what is broken and continue to live our lives as fully as we can? We need to cautiously remember that our physical lives do not need to follow the same journey as our social and spiritual lives. We can't necessarily fix that which is broken unless you're talking about a fence. Yes, you can repair a fence, but when we break, we change. The goal is to find a new normal. If we only focus on the past and wanting to return to it, we will live in a world of nostalgia, which will leave us feeling frustrated and depressed. I don't really want to return to 2012, no matter how rosy it might look from my 2020 perch. I just want to have love and holiness surrounding me and my family, even as obstacles are placed in our paths. Everything everyone breaks, that's a given. What's more important is how you react to breakage in your life and in the lives of those around you when the breakage occurs. When breakage happens in your life, I hope you have the courage to take a deep breath and to turn to family, friends, clergy, and professionals for assistance. So here's my challenge to each one of you. Reach out this week to someone you haven't talked to in a while someone who might even irritate you, reach out and check in on them. So much is broken right now, but as long as our spirits remain intact, as long as we reach out to others, as long as we remember that even as communal health is challenged, even as our unemployment rates are too high, even as we see social injustice all around us, even as fires burn everywhere, well, we are still whole. Yes, a bit bruised, but whole. And we're able to overcome the obstacles and challenges that surround us. So if you feel broken, ask others to help you feel whole again. Shana Tova Ketiva V'chatima. We turn to page 82 for the Vidui. The Vidui has two parts, the Ashamnu and the al -Khait. The Ashamnu. It's, well, it's done in the plural. It's we. We have done this. We have done that. It doesn't mean that you individually have done anything wrong, but as a community, we have sinned. So as a community, we repent. Please rise as I open the ark and join us in the Ashamnu, page 82.
We now approach the Vidui Rabbah, the long confession. We state our Vidui, our confession, for acts we never imagined. But why? As Rabbi Lawrence Hoffman wrote, even if we did not personally commit a particular sin, we likely stood idly by when others committed it. How many issues did come to our awareness, yet they slipped by? We may be guilty by association of larger transgressions than we realize. We may never have committed murder, but we may have belittled another person to the point where he or she felt like dying. Or we may have bought a cheap product only obtained through what is essentially slave labor abroad. Each seemingly innocent stone cast in this world has ripples of good and evil, known and unknown. Please join with me on page 86. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you deliberately and by mistake, and harm we have caused in your world through the words of our mouths. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you by hardening our hearts, and harm we have caused in your world through careless speech. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit, and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you by judging others unfairly, and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you through insincere apologies and harm we have caused in your world by mistreating a friend or neighbor. al shechatanu lefanecha. The ways we have wronged you through violence and abuse, and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty and business. Val kula melohas lichot, slach lanu, machal lanu, kaper lanu. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, Lead us to atonement. You may be seated. It's my honor to introduce Rob Moline, the president of our temple. He'll share a few of his thoughts with us this evening. Shana Tova. I'm Rob Moline, president of Kol Tikva. Like you, my wife Terry and I have had our lives stood on end these past six months. And in the intervening time, we all have shifted, adjusted, and have done our very best, altering our lives to stay safe for ourselves our children, parents, neighbors, and friends. And from the first days of this pandemic in March, your temple leaders have kept our congregation safe, providing love and joy as we have attended to the many needs of our community. Together, all of our efforts have enabled us as a community to weather these turbulent times and remain strong. We want to wish all of you a very good new year a much better year than the one that's just passed. We've been members of Kol Tikva since its beginning, and we are loyal supporters. We give to Kol Tikva because of what Kol Tikva gives to us. Shortly after we moved in, 
we found our way to Kotikva. And it was from that night on. It's like love at first sight. That's how we felt. We felt at home. Then all of a sudden the lockdown started and we were all alone. I remember everyone was really scared. How long was this going to last? Are we safe? We were all sitting in our houses and we started getting messages from the clergy. We will be holding an in-service, social distancing of course. They were going to put their heads together and we would come up with a plan. We support Koltifa for the community, for the friendship, for the support and the love that we feel every single day. And community is something that every human actually needs and it takes work for us to make that community so that we're supporting each other and that's why we support Cold Tikva. We can be Cold Tikva strong. <laughs> we are Cold Tikva strong. Cold Tikva strong. We are Cold Tikva strong. Yay! Hi, I'm Cynthia Deculus. Why do I give to Cold Tikva? Well, that's easy. These last five months have been so unsettled. I stare at a computer screen all day. Our summer vacation plans were canceled. Family members are falling ill. And the kids are making the best of online learning. But throughout all this turmoil, the one constant has been Kol Tikva. I am in awe of how the clergy and the senior staff transformed our community to this virtual world. My son Julian, who many of you have known since he was born, is applying to college. And he's going to chant the fourth Aliyah on Yom Kippur. One of the college applications asks him to comment on a place he considers home. When he read that question aloud at the dinner table, his sister Danielle said, well, that's easy, Kol Tikva. And we all agreed. It is going to be the easiest essay he writes because it will be from the heart. My family loves Kol Tikva, and we depend on it. And I'm guessing yours does too. So please, this high holy day season, give generously. Give whatever is meaningful to you and your family. Any amount means a lot to Kol Tikva. Don't stand idly by and don't expect others to participate. Now is the time. If ever we need to protect and build on this legacy, it is now. I encourage you to donate at a minimum of $360 so that your donation can be matched through the Kol Tikva Donor Matching Fund. We need to keep Kol Tikva strong and we need to make it secure for ourselves, our kids, and our community. Please go to koltikva.org and donate and give generously now. We are Kol Tikva strong. We turn to page 107 for the 13 attributes of God. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum V'Chanun. Adonai, Adonai, God, compassionate, gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to the thousandth generation, forgiving evil, defiance and wrongdoing, and granting pardon. We now turn to page 114 for Avinu Malkenu. Please read along with me. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our families. Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu, enter our names in the book of lives well lived. 
Avinu Malkenu, renew us for a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkenu, let our eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu Malkenu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu Malkenu, welcome our prayer with love and accept and embrace it. Avinu Malkenu, act toward us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, act for your sake, if not ours. Avinu Malkenu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice, treat us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. Avinu Malkenu. We now turn to page 122 for the Mourner's Kaddish, and we take a moment to remember, to remember those who are no longer on this earth, but who touched our lives and made us better people. Tonight, we don't read a Kaddish list, but if you have someone who you want to remember, someone who died during this season in years past, or someone who has recently departed, please write their name in the chat window if you have access to one. And let's take a moment Let's share those names. As these names are written, we remember. We remember them for all the good deeds that they did. If you're currently in a state of mourning, I'd like you to rise. If you're observing a yurt site, I'd like you to rise. And now I'd like the entire community to please rise and join me in the mourner's Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yikadash me raba b'alma divra chirate v'amlech malchute b'chayechon v'yumechon v'chayeh d'chol beit Yisrael v'agalav v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehei shme raba mevarach le'olam olamei almaya yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit roman v'yit naseh V'yatadar, v'yatalev, v'yatalal, shmei d'kud shah b'rechu. Leila, uleila, mikol b'rchata v'shirata, tushbachata v'nechamata, damiran b'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shmaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu yaseh shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the one who makes peace on high grant peace to all who mourn, to all Israel, and to all humankind. And together we say, Amen. And now for our closing benediction. It is within my power either to serve God 
or not to serve God? Serving God, I add to my own good and the good of the whole world. Not serving God, I forfeit my own good. And by not serving God, I deprive the world of that good, which was in my power to create. May we each create good in this world, and together we say, Amen. Amen. And now our closing song, Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom Bimoma. We look forward to spending tomorrow with each one of you. Khatima Tova. Good evening. I'm Rob Moline, Temple President. Join us tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. for our community Yom Kippur service. Tot and family service will follow at 11.30 a.m. Please visit our website for more information on all of our Yom Kippur services and programs scheduled for tomorrow. Next Saturday, please join us at 6.30 p.m. for our Habdalah and Sukkot community celebration. More information is on our website and will be emailed out this coming week. We will be collecting food again this year for the West Valley Food Pantry. When you bring your books back on October 4th, please bring your bad groceries then. With a new report that one in five Angelinos are food insecure, we need all of your help. Please be generous. Thank you to Koltikva Temple member Bridget Stokes and her entire production crew for putting in countless hours producing all of our high holy day services. They truly have been wonderful. Thank you to everyone who has already given their high holy day appeal. We are over halfway to our budget, so please consider giving $360 or more so your contribution can be matched by our matching fund. And thank you go out to all of our generous donors for making this match possible. Please refer to the voice booklet found on our website for a full list of everyone who made these High Holy Days so special. Gamar Hatima Tovah.